The word Chicano just means, you know, somebody that is involved with their culture. People used to associate it with gangbanging and a lot of bad things back in the days, but you know, when you grow up in that culture, you don't see it that way because you know about the love and the dedication that these people have for their families and the cars and what we do with our artwork and all the different facets of the culture that we enjoy. I grew up in it, I live it. My dad was Chicano through and through and we lived that life every day. Whether it was family tradition or incorporating the lowrider lifestyle was what we lived by. Growing up in the 70s, he used to always talk about Chicano this and you know they had their, their ways of doing things and that was their way of explaining how they live their life. We are Chicano, we are Mexican Americans, and this is what we see ourselves as. My neighbor across the street, you know, he had a lowrider, and my other friend down the street, he had a lowrider and the deals, and he had a lowrider, and then this guy had a lowrider. You bonded with certain people in the in the Chicano hood element, but I was always, you know, in the art community. I had a big wall on the side of my house, right next door in the front yard that my dad let me paint. So I was always out there painting, you know, in the hip hop scene in the early 80s. And it was a positive thing for me after I grew up and understood what it was all about. So I re-embraced the culture. You know, I got back into it and I started seeing like images and like in my head, like, oh, I gotta start painting that stuff and, you know, really giving back to the culture that way. So it works out for me. You know, I really enjoy being a part of the culture and capturing the moments of like what I see and how I see it and put it in my art and, you know, just the, the cruising culture in general. I've always been a fan of low riding and going to all the cruises. I can't remember not being around it. I think when I was little and I would, you know, see my uncle and my brother. My brother had a car show car. Seeing him enter all the shows and like seeing my uncle with his car. I was young at the time, you know, and I, I you know, I, obviously I couldn't afford it. But when I got older, my first car was a Cutlass that I actually bought it off my uncle. My grandfather even, like he had an old car that he would tell us like how he would lower it when uh, he was younger and like what he would do to it to modify it. He said it wasn't the best ride, but it looked nice, you know, like, uh, but he would, he would always explain it to us. That was just the way that you did things back then, you know, like they, they liked the style and like you could see a car and be like, oh, that's a low rider, but there's so many different types. Just like people, you know, like there's so many different types of people, but you could tell that it's a person. A lot of the times it's, it's a family heirloom. It's been handed down from the grandpa to the son, to the, you know, grandson, to the great grandson that carries on to the, the communities and how we treat each other with the respect and the gratitude that we have. You know, it's a, it's a lot's changed. At the same time in the community, everybody appreciates how hard they work together in building their cars. My dad had a car, 1976 Impala, glass house. And um, it was his first car and it was also my first car. And he gave it to me when I was 13 years old. I couldn't even drive, but uh, he gave it to me anyway. <laughs> He's like, it's broken, but you'll fix it, and it's yours. Cruising down Central in the early 90s with my dad and my mom, and you know, going to my tia's house, because she actually lived on Central, so we would have to go down Central to get to her house. <laughs> but we would sit with our lawn chairs out there and watch cars turn around, and the whole cruising experience. You know, I grew up in South Phoenix, so everything around us and what we were surrounded by was just low riding. That's all we talked about at school. That's all how we all related. What kind of car are you gonna get? Or what, do you, what kind of car do you have, you know? And at 13, 14 years old, that's all you think about. That's all I think about besides my son, obviously, but you know, cars is, is everything to me. And low riding means everything to me. You gotta give credit to the mechanics, the people who are making this work, like the guys who are putting the hydraulics, the Franks, those guys that are out there tearing these cars apart, redoing the suspension to make them perform like they do, and being able still to drive it. That's like an art in itself. You might not be an artist on canvas, but I guarantee you, you know what I mean, if you take a look at the technical work these guys are, they're putting together masterpieces. It's a big canvas. It's a rolling canvas, 100%. The translation with art and the lowrider would be, you know, you get to pick however you want it. I mean, there's no real rules. I mean, you can do whatever you want. I guess it was the wow factor, you know, like people were trying to be different. They were trying to think outside the box other than what they would see on the streets. And they utilized parts and things that nobody would ever think of to create this beautiful machine that I think is the most beautiful custom cars in the world. You know, because it takes a lot of heart, it takes a lot of love to build something like that. And the creativity is the ultimate factor. I think that's why I continue doing it is because just the love of, you know, air flowing through your hair, you know, in the convertible or whatever, you know. <laughs> I don't have much hair, but you know. 
being in your car and people, when you're passing by, people are staring and looking and there's thumb, thumbs up and that feel of like, man, this feels good. Like I created something that people like or the car I'm driving is, is immaculate or beautiful and people just see it and it kind of gives a sense of love and just a good feeling. It's always been cool. It's always been, it's just in a small niche of people, but then when you get it to the place where it's, you know, expanded to car culture. I was at Barrett Jackson. There's Lowrider Barrett Jackson. It's always about the car. Like, it makes you look good. You pull up to a spot, you drop, you hit your switches on somebody, you pull up, you make an entrance. That's how you make an entrance in the car culture. You roll up and let everybody know you're there. I think it's really cool that now the culture's being recognized. Being here from Phoenix, it's really cool to see like people that I know getting the right and like being involved in that whole thing and like embracing it. You never would have thought it would, you would ever see the day of something like that, you know, when I was younger, you know, it was like, you see a lowrider and people just like kind of shy away from it. Like, oh man, get away from them, they're probably a gang member, you know, like now I have people like all sorts like coming up to me and they're like, oh wow, can I look at your car? So it's a whole different thing now. There was a stigma behind lowriding because back then Impala was in, in the 80s, the Regals and the Cullises were affordable vehicles and things that people could get for a couple hundred dollars, right? So then they associated those with people like gangsters that bought these cars because they were hundred bucks. Now that people are starting to appreciate the vehicle for what it is, instead of the stigma that came from years ago, people are wanting to see these vehicles on the street. They're wanting them to be in their movie. They're wanting them to be in their halftime show. They're wanting them to be in the commercial. But let me say something, Chicano is not a costume. It's a lifestyle. It's not something you can just put on and, and play. It's something that you have to live every day and you have to embody it and it starts from generations ago. It's love, it's respect, you know, it's, it's teamwork, it's camaraderie, you know what I mean? It's passion, there's so many different emotions that get involved when you're dealing with a community of people who just got nothing but love and respect for each other.